did it! You did it, man! What's up, everyone? Magic Bard here with a pretty sick movie magic tutorial little trick that you guys can use in After Effects. No plugins required, a lot of patience, and cool output. So this is a effect that I first saw from one of Zach King's, I think it was his Vine video, but I saw it on his Instagram account. Um, and you guys can check that one out for inspiration. But yeah, he jumped into a moving car, so I thought we'd try and create that one. And on the last video, the homie ISKA, I think it's Iska, left a comment saying, make a Zach King magic tutorial video. So I assumed it could be any. Um, Zach King video and I chose this one because it's relatively easier to create than his other ones um, and we can get more advanced later on and before we get started if you guys are new to my channel new to my stuff uh, be sure to subscribe turn on the notifications by clicking on the little bell right next to the subscribe button that way whenever I put up a new tutorial you'll be the first to check it out see it and learn sick epic visual effects every week so let's get into it I'll show you kind of the layering that I did and how to mask out your actor and stuff so let's jump right into this one first things first what you're gonna do is when you shoot this one remember to shoot it on a tripod now what I did was a little lead-in shot so and you can kind of shoot this however you want now when you start it I let in with my actor Ben he's telling me hey back up back up there's a car coming and then I set the camera down on a tripod right there and then he pretends like a car is driving by and then tries to jump into it now <laughs> he didn't have to fall on the ground but it does make it look a little more real if he's really jumping into the car Okay, and then the next step I did was left the camera where it's at and we shot another plate of the car driving up the street. And then as the car passes me on the tripod, I quickly pan the tripod over to film the car. And so when the car is driving, I had the driver tell Ben to jump out of the car like this and kind of throw his hands out and it kind of adds to the realism that hey maybe this guy really did jump into this car right through the window um, and that kind of helps sell the effect so those those are the two shots you're gonna need so let's jump into it let's uh, drag both of these layers into a composition so I'll create my in and out point of my car shot so right about here and then I'll end it at about out there and what you're gonna wanna do is match up the car with your actor so I'll just take this into a new composition alright cool and then I'm gonna take my actor shot and make in and out points for that okay he jumps in right there out point and in point okay and now you guys can do as long of an of a heading as you want so drag my actor onto on top of the car turn my opacity by pressing T to 50 percent and then matching up when he jumps into the car so bring my car layer down to about there and then let's see he'll jump in right right here is where I'll cut it so the first step is really sizing up the clips right and that will look good for me and then the next step is you can turn your opacity back up to a hundred percent or actually what I'll do before that is line up right before his hand touches any part of the car or the car's shadow okay so it'll be this hand right here which is right about there and then I'll control shift D to split the clip and then I'll only work with this one up here 
this will be easy to mask out because I can just mask this one out really quickly to show you guys what that'll look like. So I'll use the pen tool, create a mask around my actor without touching the car. And then you can also, um, now we can turn the opacity back up to 100. And then you can keyframe this uh, mask. So just make sure that the car is not touching the mask. So the shadow. So what I'll do is open up the mask settings and bring my playhead to the end about right here. Keyframe the mask path by clicking on this stopwatch and then using the page up, page down, start moving my mask around. All right, good. So now we have a quick little mask made right here. And then what you can do to fix these edges is feather your mask. So try 10 pixels maybe um, or more, 20 pixels. So that'll help the mask sort of disappear in there. Okay, and then the next step is working with this layer, which will be a little more harder because he is overlapping with the car. So there's a few things you can do with this one. You can use the roto brush tool and rotoscope him out. Now it's going to be really hard to roto brush him while his edges are so blurry. I've noticed that it's a lot easier for me to use the pen tool and feather out the edges myself. Um, but if you have the roto brush tool mastered, um, you could probably use that one. But let me show you kind of the mask that I made. So here's my actor and I created three masks. So there's going to be a top layer, a bottom layer, and then a shadow layer. So let me show you kind of how I did that one. So as he gets closer to the car, as he overlaps the car, I have to get a little more detailed on the mask and then I get really all up in him right there. So I have his upper half masked out and that's the purple mask right here. I have the red mask which is um, the whole left side of the scene and that will disappear in a second right there. So. It goes from once his legs and shadow get really into the car, I have to concentrate on only creating the mask for that. And then the pink mask is a subtra subtraction mask where his legs are, okay? And then that is how I created the mask for Ben, all right? And now you can see as he starts to jump into the window of the car, I start to put, put a couple of his um, limbs into the car. So his left hand will disappear as it's going into the car. Same with his left leg. Okay, and I'm going frame by frame to show you how I did that. And then I slowly fit him in there. Okay, so once you create your mask for your actor, then what you're looking at is, let me kind of show you here. So here's the actor, here's your car, okay? And then right as, let me close this, right as the actor starts to fit into the window of the car, what you're going to do is separate some of the layers, okay? So what I did is control shift D to separate these two layers right here. Then I duplicated I duplicated this layer so I have two two of the same layers. So these are both my Ben actor layer. I turned I just masked out the bottom shadow half so that I can have full control of the shadow and I moved it closer to the car shadow. Okay, so if we check the position, it's not where the position should be if I hit the reset button. 
Okay, so that's where the position was. And then I moved it a little closer to the car. So it looks like his shadow is morphing into the car shadow, which is what, what it would look like if he's actually jumping through the window. And then I have this layer of the Ben layer. And let me open that one up to show you exactly what, what I'm doing here. So there's a few things that I have, a few effects going on with the Ben layer. I have the liquify effect on and I did a little bit of the mesh warp tool. Okay, so what I did with that was I meshed his legs a little bit closer in because they were kind of sticking out too far to look real enough that he was like jumping into the car. So I squished his legs together so it looks like that he's going into the window butt first. Um, and remember this effect is happening so fast that you can have these little imperfections like a uh, um, chopped off side leg action <laughs> that we got going on here. Um, so I just added that mesh warp effect just for that one frame. Okay, and you can see it goes back to normal mesh. So I go just squishing in together here and then back to normal. The other thing I did was I used a little bit of a liquify and I used this kind of uh, smudge tool as I think it's called in the in Photoshop and I smudged his smudged his um, arm into the window right here. Okay? And that's just one frame as well, right? So these are just little little small details that you can add that will help add to the effect. So, you know, one frame mesh warp and a one frame liquify and you guys should be good. And then what I did was I added a curves effect that will also be one frame long. So I start at normal and then I darken it just a tad as he gets closer to the car because there's a shadow happening on the right side of the car over here so he should be getting a little bit darker barely but um, you know these things help so what are these things up here these are shadows okay so as he gets closer to the car let me zoom in here to show you that I'm adding these one frame shadows okay so this is the shadow from the top of the window on his arm and then I have a another shadow on his left leg this is also from the car okay and then the next frame we do the same thing we have the shadow that's coming on top of his body and this is from the upper half of the car and then he's in the car okay and this is just the the lay, the shot of the car driving up the street easy as that so that's really the effect right there it's really a matter of some serious patience as you do the the hard work which is this stuff right here really cutting him out and going frame by frame using your pen tool cutting him out or if you like to use the roto brush tool you can use that as well just really you know be detailed with it and then once you got that you basically are all done with your effect now you can add the fun stuff into it um, you guys if you've seen my other tutorials you probably have guessed what comes next which is um, oh yeah this is the header that uh, I have on there and the next part would be adding the camera shake and that kind of stuff to make it look real so what we're gonna do here is I zoomed into the comp you know I pre comp the whole thing so I just pre comp this whole file into a new composition added a null object and zoomed into our footage and then added two sliders okay now you guys can see this stuff in my other tutorials on how I use the wiggle effect so you can go into your effects and presets type in slider and add these slider controls so i would add two of these slider controls like this just drag them onto your clip and then name them so name one of them your slider seconds and then one your slider pixels and what what that's going to do is you're going to go into your um, composition press p and then you're going to hold down the alt button and click on the stopwatch 
And what that's going to do is it's going to open up this little expression that you can write in. And so you're, you're going to type in wiggle and then this parentheses right here. And then you're going to take your pick whip tool. Actually, I'll just do it for you right now. So you're going to hit wiggle parentheses. Use the pick whip tool and drag it onto your first slider, your slider seconds. Okay. And then you're going to hit comma. And then you're going to drag the pick whip tool again onto your slider pixels. And then end parentheses. And then press enter. And what that's going to do is now you can keyframe your wiggle effect. And what the wiggle effect does is it shakes the camera around and makes it look like it's handheld. So let me press U to show you what's happening here. So you can see the keyframes for my seconds and my pixels. I start off at 340 and then I drop it down at the end of my comp because I do real camera shakes at the end where I don't need the wiggle effect. So I brought it from three seconds, um, three times a second and it will slide around 40 pixels. Every second it will slide around three times and move 40 pixels. That's what it means. And then I dropped it down to zero because now I'm actually holding it with my hand. So I don't need that wiggle effect. And this null object is to add a little more. So what I did was go to layer, new, null object. Okay, and that'll create a null right there. Let me just delete this one for now. So you'll have your null object. You're going to parent your full composition to the null. And then what you can do is keyframe the position and the scale and start to move stuff around to add even more of that handheld effect in there. And then guys, you're done. That's it. If these tutorials help you at all, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be sending out a bunch of these tutorials every week so you guys can learn movie magic and cool visual effects techniques, motion graphics, all that kind of stuff to help you become a better editor. And feel free to follow me on social media. I'm at Magic Bard on Instagram and Facebook. I'm posting a bunch of uh, Photoshop and behind the scenes stuff up there. So you guys can check that one out. Just more motion graphics and visual effects um, to hopefully inspire you on your editing journey. Um, and guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.